With this Beatles Blackbird guitar lesson, we'll show you how to play the complete fingerstyle arrangement with guitar tabs, chord diagrams, plus a practice karaoke video. We're going to cover it all the step-by-step -step approach. As the first step, we need to make sure you know basic fingerstyle technique, and that involves aligning and assigning the fingers to pluck certain strings. Uh, we're going to assign the one finger to pluck the three string, the second or middle finger on the second string, and the third finger on the first string. And the thumb will pluck either the fourth, fifth, or sixth strings, depending on the bass note of the chord we're playing. And keeping that in mind, this basic finger style technique, simply makes it a lot easier to learn the rest of the song, as we can shift our primary focus now to the fretting hand and the chord changes. For the intro, we start with a partial G chord shape. We're going to use just the two and three fingers on the bottom two strings, uh, middle finger, fifth string, second fret, third finger on the bottom string, third fret. And we're going to pinch the two and six strings together. So again, by aligning and assigning our fingers, middle finger will be on the two string, thumb on the bottom string. There are the first notes to Blackbird right there. And that's going to be followed by the first finger plucking the third string open. So once you have that down, you'll apply a count. One, two. Then we shift. Uh, the fretting hand, if you use the correct fingers, it'll stay steady in position, meaning you're not going to move the fingers a lot. Uh, the first finger now will go down on the uh, second string first fret. And we're going to do another pinch between two strings, this time the fifth and the second strings. And again, with that first finger, we pluck the third string. And that'll be the three and four counts when we put it all together, like so. One, two, three, four. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is equal volume. Uh, you don't want the bass or the melody note. Uh, too loud, equal volume on each, and then you also want to get a count going uh, to help uh, get a sense of tempo. One, two, three, four. Next we go to a G slash B chord shape, and we're going to pinch those two strings, the fifth and the second string, and we're going to slide up from that G slash B chord shape, that's along the second fret position, that's where our first finger is. We're going to take the same shape and slide up to the tenth fret position. And pretty much it's the same chord shape. Uh, it's a different chord up here. As the frets get closer together, uh, we're actually two frets apart up here, but pretty much the same chord shape. And how we're going to count this transition here, I'm going to count it as a three count. Here's what I mean. One, two, so the second count will be the slide, and then three. And we'll do that again. One, two, three. And now let's piece it together from the beginning. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And we'll do it again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now we'll stay on this chord shape for the next part. I'll give you a quick preview of what we're going to do. One, one, two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one. So with the same chord shape, uh, we're going to start uh, by pinching the two and the five strings together. And then we go down to the third string, individual, one single note. And then the second string, again we're holding the chord shape, so I just have to call off the uh, string names. It's going to be the pinch, then third string, second string, then fifth string, second string. So backing it up again. And if I were to count that, uh, I would consider the pinch the one count, and then we have a four count after that. One. One, two, three, four, and then we add one more note, one, that third string open. And that's the uh, certain phrase or passage we want to get down. One, one, two, three, four, one. And 
let's do that two times in a row. It's played twice in a row in the original recording. So here we go. And we'll do it one more time, a little faster. And with that, we'll review now the intro from the beginning, a slow walkthrough. One, two, ready, go. For the verse section, the vocals begin, but guitar-wise, we're going to repeat uh, the same progression we played for the intro. So this progression is actually played twice to start the song. Second time around is when we sync up the lyrics, Blackbird singing in the dead of night. And you sync up the lyrics just like that. Um, for those of you who haven't done a lot of singing and playing, uh, the way you go about it, at least what I think is the best way, is first you learn the, the chords, you focus on the guitar chords first, then you time the lyrics, and then finally you focus on singing in key. So we're mainly focused on the timing right now. Uh, Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Now, as a little added bonus, if you do want to focus on singing in key, you want to hit a D note on that. And I'm not going to attempt to do that. You don't want to hear out of, uh, out of key vocals during this lesson, but Blackbird singing in the dead of night. You want that to be a D note for those of you who haven't done a lot of that. So um, if you focus on kind of landing certain notes with the changes, you tend to gradually sing everything else in key. Uh, but with that, um, let's go to the next section. Uh, take these broken wings and learn to fly. A uh, lot of different ways to learn this section, but how I like to go about it is you uh, go to what is a C chord shape, actually. This is a C chord along the third fret position. We're only going to worry about using the one and the fourth pinky fingers. Uh, first finger on the fifth string, third fret pinky on the second string, fifth fret. We do a pinch there, and that same deal we did earlier, where we pinch and then pluck the third string open. Now we're going to focus on a four chord sequence. And how we go about it, we start with the C, and then uh, the bass note, it's an ascending bass line, but meanwhile the first finger will shift for the first time to the top string. Since we rarely play the top string in Blackbird, uh, you could use your third finger or simply shift the two finger up to pluck that. So let's put that together. One, two, three, four. And we'll do it one more time because you want to get this down. Because what happens next is we repeat this transition two frets higher. sinking or timing lyrics, take these broken wings and learn to fly. Uh, an ascending bass line, now we're up on the, along the seventh fret, uh, only a half fret apart, third finger is on the eighth fret. And we go back to that finger style pattern that we played earlier uh, for the intro. Put that together again, starting with the C. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. And then what I like to do is uh, I shift the first finger down one fret and then put the pinky where the third finger was. So we're just lowering the bass note, but instead of being one fret apart, we're now two fret apart, two frets apart. And the same uh, finger style pattern. Again, let's back it up from the C and put it together. And then using that same shape, we go down one fret, and we're going to reverse 
that sort of transition or maneuver we did earlier. That's what I mean by reversing it. We're going down this time. Uh, the bass note goes down one fret, so right now we're on the fifth fret with that first finger. And then let's back it up now. We'll do it from the beginning. I'll say the lyrics this time. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. back to C, live, and then we drop down that melody uh, note, the second string, backing it up a little bit, Dun. let's back it up again, starting from the C, take these broken wings and learn to fly. Then we wrap up the verse with a four chord sequence uh, from the shape we're on now. We simply slide down one fret and we're going to maintain that same finger style pattern. And then take note it's a descending bass line. So right now we're along the uh, second fret. And then the next chord shape, it'll be open on the fifth string. So we'll put those two chords together. For the first time in the song, we're going to shift, if you note the thumb, we're going to shift to the fourth string now uh, for the bass note, and then back to the opening chord, G. And if we put together that four chord sequence with the lyrics, you were only waiting for this moment to arise. And let's do it one more time. You were only waiting for this moment to arise. And then the next clip, what we'll do, uh, we'll put the complete verse together. We'll do a slow walkthrough, uh, and you can focus on syncing those lyrics as well with the chord changes. After verse 1, there's an interlude played, no vocals, and we're going to sort of repeat how we ended the initial verse section. Uh, we're going to go to that C chord shape again, along the third fret position. Uh, just a two count on this one. Do the pinch and then the uh, third string. And then we shift down uh, to a G slash B chord shape. So we'll put, to put those together as a four count. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to do that descending progression we did earlier in the verse. Then we go back to the initial fingerstyle pattern. And then to that other chord with the fourth string bass note. So we'll back it up again from the top with the C. One, two, three, four. Then back to the G. And we'll do that first interlude one more time. Now before moving on to the next verse, it's always a good idea to get a good foundation down. It helps make learning the rest of the song a little easier. So in the next clip, uh, we'll do a slow walkthrough from the very beginning, combining the intro, uh, first verse, and first interlude sections.
After the first interlude, we go into verse 2, which will be played the same as verse 1, guitar-wise, uh, just a substitution of different lyrics. And so with that, it's a good idea now to get, uh, again, a good idea or sense of the song's foundation. Uh, if you can play it from the beginning, uh, the intro, verse 1, the first interlude, and verse 2, uh, you're just about halfway through playing the complete song. After verse 2, we go into the bridge section, and the chord shape we're going to start it with, it's that same shape we used for C along the 3rd fret position, but now we're going to be up along the 8th fret position. So 8 on that 5th string, then pinkies on uh, the 10th fret, the 2nd string. And it's a 2 count here, the pinch, and then the open 3rd string. And then we move down 1 fret, now the third finger, we're only one fret above, we were a whole step apart, two frets apart here. Now we're going to be one fret apart as we go down one fret. So we'll do that again. Then keeping the same shape, we go down two frets. And then back to that initial C chord on the third fret position. So we'll put together those four chords, we'll do this a couple of times. Then the same chord shape goes down to the first fret position, and we go back to the initial finger style pattern. And then move up two frets and repeat. Let's start it from the top of the bridge here. start off repeating the progression again. And again down that first fret. But here's where the change comes in. We start a descending progression, very similar to the verse. Fourth string bass note. And I'm just going to do uh, one count on that G because we will not play the full progression. We're just going to what this does, this is a lead into verse 3. It's a verse without any lyrics, uh, but we won't, we won't end with that like we did previously. But um, so how we'll end the bridge will be with just plucking that G and let it sustain. And let's put it all together now from the top. One, two, ready, go. After the first bridge, the verse section will be repeated again. It's, uh, I refer to it as an empty verse. Verse 3 has no vocals, uh, and it's pretty much played the same as the first two verses. There is one variation for verse 3, and we'll show that to you right now. It starts the same. And here's the variation. So instead of what we did for verses 1 and 2, Repeating the finger style pattern, one, two, the variation for verse three will be, and that's it. Uh, the rest of it will be played the same as the previous two verses. So with that, it's a good idea at this point in the lesson to again work or help develop a sense of the song's arrangement by focusing on the middle portion of the song. And that sequence would be the first bridge, followed by verse 3, the empty verse. And then that's followed by repeating the bridge section. So bridge, verse, bridge, uh, that's the middle portion of the song. And if you pause the video or work on that right now, uh, it'll simply make it a lot easier when it comes time to putting the complete arrangement together later. 
After the second bridge, we go into the second guitar interlude, another section without vocals. Uh, the second interlude starts the same as uh, the verse sections. And then where it changes here is we're going to extend this fingerstyle progression. I count it as four measures. Here's how I would go about it. One, two, three, four, we stay on the chord and now we do this one two three four one two three and a little sustain so uh, let's play it from the beginning put it together That's where you hear the bird whistle on the original recording. Uh, there's sort of a pause or at least a moment of uh, silence, just the bird whistle for about two seconds. And then that's followed by... Uh, definitely want to uh, sound the slide on the way down. It's the same chord shape. And then we go back, um, another variation on the main theme, uh, starting with the G. shape again. So we're kind of ascending. Then we start a descending riff going back down. And then back to that chord with the fourth string bass now. And that's going to lead into verse 4. Um, let's review that part again starting with the slide down after the bird whistle blackbird singing we lead into verse four and with that let's put together uh, the complete second interlude now we'll do a slow walk through one two Ready, go. Verse 4 will be the final verse of the song, and that's played the same as verse 1. Same chord progression, same lyrics. Uh, after that, we have the song's ending, uh, which pretty much repeats the you were only waiting uh, for this moment to arise. Uh, that line is played twice along with its progression. So let's work on that for the ending. Uh, that starts with the C chord shape, and the ending's going to go like this. You were only waiting for this moment to arise. Then repeat. You were only waiting for this moment to a... Uh, and then we've got the ending. If we look at the tab, to a... Uh, it's right on that syllable, rise. To a uh, rise. Um, it's not very clear-cut, the ending. You definitely want to end on a G chord. What I like to do... You were only waiting for this moment to arise. Uh, like to do a nice little strum on that. Uh, but as long as you end on a G, uh, you have a good ending. Once you have each section down, the final step is to put together a complete arrangement or performance of the song. And you can do that along with my Blackbird Karaoke video. And with that video, you can either practice singing along with Blackbird Karaoke, playing guitar with Blackbird Karaoke, or doing both.